please join me in the prayer for illumination printed in your bulletin. Lord, open our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with transforming joy what you say to us today. Amen. Scripture is from Galatians 6, 1 through 10. I am reading from the NRSV. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Thank you. Okay. This morning, we have indeed a very special treat. Three of our youth are coming at this point. Come on. One. I already got one. I got two. Where's my three? Come on. They are going to share with you a kind of reader's theater, which is going to spotlight what happens in this passage. All right, y'all three, come on up. Up. They are going to be over here at the pulpit mic. And stand close enough to it so that people can hear you. And when it's your turn, get a little bit closer to it. You got it? All right. One of these three is going to be Miriam. Wonder which one? <laughs> All right. Then we have Dad. Who is Dad? All right. And then we have the man. <laughs> I get to be the narrator, okay. Once upon a time, many, many years ago, there was a peasant girl named Miriam who lived in a small village. Hello. Her widowed father spent much time instructing the girl about the proper way to behave. Girls never call boys on the phone. <sighs> that is so next century. And Miriam learned right from wrong. Never lie, cheat, swear, or steal. One summer, Miriam's family became quite destitute. We are quite destitute. So I've heard. A region-wide drought caused the family's garden plot to wilt, then die. Would you just look at that corn, Father? Yeah. And verily, it hath perished. What? There would be no vegetables to be put up and savored through the cold months ahead. Food became very difficult to find. Dad, where's the fridge? It hath not yet been invented. <laughs> well, no wonder the food's so hard to find. At first, Miriam missed the taste of fresh corn and carrots. Then she craved them. I am such a destitute waif. I shall soon fade from this earth without the aforementioned produce. Hmm. Rough translation. She was hungry. <laughs> Each day, Miriam had to venture further from home to find water for her family's needs. Haven't they ever heard of indoor plumbing? And every day, she desired what she had always taken for granted. Like a big bot of Pinto beans. Mm. Then the day came when Miriam discovered an artesian well. Did you look at that? 
Water sprang forth, providing fresh, clean, cold water from deep under the ground. Water does a body good. She followed the stream as it flowed from the well and discovered a beautiful garden filled with sweet corn, potatoes, carrots, and cabbage, and a generous variety of vegetables more numerous than she'd ever seen. Would you look at them veggies? She could almost taste a pot of homemade stew from the abundance of these beautiful plants. The longer she looked at the garden, the more she desired the crops. I have to have them. After entertaining the idea for far too long, Miriam hurriedly loaded her apron with as many vegetables as she could carry. And then she returned home, glancing furtively behind her, knowing she had stolen, knowing that she had done something wrong. All right, wait there. Where did you get them vegetables? A man's voice startled Miriam. I, I, uh... She stammered. I found them. In the middle of a drought? The man queried. I think not. He challenged gently. Miriam wrestled with defiance. I was hungry. Then anger. Well, doesn't he have anything better to do than look for vegetable robbers? Followed closely by a rather feeble attempt at justifying her act of thievery. I was just thinking of dear old dad. In the, <laughs> in the end, she could do no less than admit that she had stolen the garden produce. I did? You did. I was afraid you were going to say that. I know you took my vegetables. Well, sure, because the loudmouth over there told you. No. Well, yes. I did hear him say that, but I saw you take them. The man stated. Your vegetables. Miriam blustered. Tis true. I've worked hard all summer growing these crops, and I have grand plans for them. The man added significantly. I am so ashamed. Miriam bowed her head. The man was warmed by Miriam's act of contrition. I think we can take it from here. Fine. <laughs> all right. Well, if you need me, I'll, I'll be over here. Where were we? In the middle of an act of contrition, I think. All right. Yours or mine? Would you believe me if I said yours? No. Uh, then it was me. I think you mean I. So it was you. No, it was you. <laughs> You're confusing me. Indeed. Well, then let me say this. I'm willing to extend you either mercy or grace. Which do you desire? Are they not the same thing, sir? They are not, my lady. Well, then please explain what mercy grants. If I were to endow mercy, You'd be completely forgiven for taking my vegetables. And that is what I most desire, for sure. Perhaps yet you will hear the matter of grace. Should I extend grace, you'd be invited to come and gather any vegetables from my garden that you like, any time you like. It would be as if you were a member of my family with all the rights of a dog. Miriam marveled at the gifts offered to her. She knew that she did not deserve the man's kindness, yet she longed in equal measure for both mercy and grace. <laughs> yeah, old habits, sorry. Sir, I do not deserve either mercy or grace. I should claim in all honesty that I am in no way deserving of the rights of a family member, but still I could not return home with a pure heart without an equal measure of both. My dear job... You shall indeed have both mercy and grace. For in my mercy, you can have whatever you earned. Will you accept my gifts? Yes. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, that was just an interesting way to flow into this passage. Because honestly, there's so much stuff happening in Galatians 6, 1 through 10. You could actually take it verse by verse and we could spend the next 10 weeks doing this. But as it is, let's look at what happened. We could have had fireworks equal to the 4th of July. Did you enjoy your 4th of July fireworks? Were you careful? All right. Well, I hope that the only fireworks you encountered on the 4th of July were of the kind that exploded in the sky and reminded you and me and everyone that we are indeed 
uh, people who in our history can celebrate that day whenever folks stood up for what was right, regardless of personal consequences, and, and declared that they would not be a part of tyranny any longer. And so we celebrate that with, with fireworks that light up the sky. And I do hope that was your only fireworks. That you didn't have any of the fireworks that come whenever people get angry at each other. Whenever pe people realize that somebody stole their vegetables. You know, we could have had fireworks there. The man could have been very angry with Miriam. And rather than extend grace and mercy, he could have extended fireworks. He could have. But Paul tells us through Galatians that we need to deal with one another gently. That whenever someone is in a trespass, a transgression, when they've sinned against you, when somebody has messed up, deal with them with a spirit of gentleness. And that's what the man did. Offering mercy and grace. And she who deserved neither received both and was restored. And therein we find ourselves. For we have all sinned. We have all transgressed. We have all done things that are terrible. We've done, sinned against God. We have hurt one another's feelings. We've done things we should not have done. And we are all deserving of fireworks. But God, in God's grace, offers us waterworks instead. The water of baptism, in which the Spirit of God is imparted to our souls. And we are led into a spirit of gentleness and a spirit of goodness. Paul reminds us of these things, but then he gives us a reminder. God is not mocked. You cannot pull one over on God. If you are in sin and you're going to keep on sinning, don't tell God you're quitting. God is not mocked. And whatever you sow, you will reap. Now they tell me that because we are no longer an agricultural society, that some of our young ones may not understand that. So let me put it to you this way. If you plant a turnip, you will get a turnip. If you plant a sunflower seed, you'll get a sunflower. If you plant lies, you'll get lies. If you plant deceit, you'll get deceit. If you plant misery, you'll get misery. Whatever you plant, so shall you sow. Whatever you sow, so shall you reap. So be careful what you sow before God. Today, we remember that we are all sinners. But God, in God's great goodness, through Jesus Christ, and by His very Spirit, offers us another way. Another way to live, and another way to go home. The only way. And so we consider as we come to his table, do we have a spirit of fireworks or do we have a spirit of waterworks? Are we angry or are we forgiving? Are we mean or are we loving? Do we extend hatred or grace? And what do we need most? Amen.